Hey, good afternoon, everybody. This is Zoe Warren with God's Plan Truth TV. Praise God. Another week here um, doing what we do every week. Praise God. Just uh, working, um, working with the Lord. Let me bring this window down a little bit. It's a little bright. Praise God. It's a very, very informal meeting that we have every week. Getting encouraged, sharing words from the Lord, whatever God's talking to us about. Praise God. Generally, it's me and Dave Loggy. You know, we do a lot of uh, of chatting back and forth. We've been doing it for a long time. But I got a very special treat for us today. Um, Andy Hayner from Full Speed Impact Ministries. He was one of the uh, one of the leaders that came down um, in the, my early days of, of just doing ministry, trying to do the works of Jesus and greater, and encouraged me and my family greatly. I. I owe a, a debt of gratitude, an eternal debt of gratitude to him for his faithfulness and his obedience, um, you know, to do what the word says. And right now, let me, let me just rebuke something. In the name of Jesus, probably the Holy Spirit, devil, you go from our stuff. Get out of here. Don't come back in Jesus' name. And I just, I'm so thankful that they came and they showed us that um, we don't have anything to be afraid of. <laughs> Amen. That they showed us that the devil is a defeated foe, that Jesus destroyed him. Amen. And then manifested us to destroy all of his works from uh this time forth and forevermore praise god so um it's it's our duty it's our it's our very purpose it's the whole reason we're here if that's the reason we're here then then that means that the devil can't destroy the works of god the works of god the sons of god destroy the works of the devil amen and andy hannah was instrumental in helping me and my family get to that revelation and i just want to welcome him hey andy how's it going brother hey it's going it's great it's good to see you, man. It's good to be here. Thanks for yeah. having me on the show again. It's good to see you too, man. Uh, every time we, uh, every time I see you, I feel like I need to smile, and my cheeks start to hurt because I'm trying not to smile, but I keep smiling anyway. <laughs> 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 Praise God! I just, I'm, th I'm really thankful for you, and I don't know how to say it enough. So bless the hey. Lord. Hey, uh, I never told you this um, that I've actually run into somebody that you got activated up here in, in the Milwaukee area. Um, I can't remember his name now, but he, uh, he was telling me how he's really got a zeal for uh, healing the sick and that sort of thing. And he had seen me on Facebook and wanted to know if I know, knew this awesome man of God in South Carolina named Zoe Warren. And I said, really? Yeah, I do know that awesome man of God. And so, hey, man, I'm running into your disciples all, all the way up here in, in Wisconsin. Bless the Lord. Praise God. Your work is bearing fruit, brother. <laughs> Praise the vine, man. We're just the branches. Amen. 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 Bless the Lord. Well, I thank God for the shade that He gave us so we could grow and, and begin to bud through your ministry. Praise God. It was just great. You know, such a refreshment to, to have hope. You know, and you and Dave and Patty, when you guys came and uh, filled us up and took us out and let us loose, man. <laughs> awesome. But bless the Lord. So, what, so tell us a little bit about your ministry. What are you doing? What have you been up to? Uh, what's happening? What's new? Praise God. You know, um, this is uh, an interesting time of year because it's cold and snowy up here. So this is I've, I've found that this is kind of a good season for me to write. Um, but before that, I've been doing an awful lot of, and we were going and blowing all through 2015, uh, doing uh, training seminars and conferences. Uh, we went to uh, Washington, to Oregon, to uh, North Dakota. Um, we were in, uh, and then spent about three weeks in Kenya. Uh, we had, we took a team. It was the first time I actually took a team overseas. And that was incredible because in, we had a team of five people. And honestly, Zoe, the funny thing about it was that of the five, four were in the category that they're, they were going, hoping that they might finally get to see a miracle that wow. God does through them. <laughs> And I'm telling you, man, by the time we were done, uh, I asked people to kind of, you know, think back through your time here and give me the, the low ball conservative estimate of what you believe that, that you saw. And we kind of totaled it up. And, and in three weeks, um, a little bit less in the country, we saw no less than 1,000 instant miracles. Um, we saw 300 people commit their lives to Christ for the first time. And more than that, we saw 200 people that, uh, in, in you, as you know, Kenya, just about everybody uh, that's ever gone on a mission trip has gone on a mission trip to Kenya. Um, so it's, it's highly inundated with the gospel. But unfortunately, it's inundated w merely with the gospel of, sal uh, of our salvation, 
not the gospel of the kingdom. It's not the whole gospel. And so a lot of what we were doing was activating believers so that instead of just waiting, you know, trying to do their best so that they could go to heaven when they died uh, and being good church attenders in the meanwhile, we taught them that Jesus says that a disciple, when they're fully trained, will be just like their master. Ooh, hallelujah. And that you've been, as soon as you start to show some problem, promise, we've, we've not just given you the gospel, we've given you Western Christianity. Because as soon as you start to show some promise um, in terms of anointing and gifting and character uh, as a leader, um, we, we take you and throw you into a seminary where they teach you how to be a clergyman who can, who can make congregations. But mm. Jesus didn't do that. He threw you into the war on, under his wing to make you a disciple who would go and make disciples. Um, yeah. And so we just basically taught them, said, whatever you're doing Sunday morning and making congregations, do what you do. We're not trying to stop that. But you, after Sunday morning, that's when disciple making starts. Your ministry can't start and stop in this building and behind this pulpit because there's too many people who would who don't know Jesus Christ who come into buildings on Sunday but they're hurting they're not under experiencing the fullness of their Christian life through the week uh, and so we took them out and it was just awesome we saw Kenyan women who were petrified and who were passed over uh, mm -hmm. because of their status in society um, not only go out and heal the sick and win people to Jesus, but actually start taking other Kenyan women out healing the sick and winning people to Jesus. Uh, uh -huh. So we just had, we had a blast and we came back from there and I got a chance to go do a conference with one of my heroes in the faith, David Hogan, um, down in uh, Pennsylvania in September. That was amazing just to get to um, spend some time with him and, um, Man, we did some other stuff as well, and 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 it, it was been really fun seeing my family getting involved, and each one of them are starting to come into their own. My son's getting ready to graduate high school, and he's looking to go into the mission field uh, for a couple of years. He's going to do the the Mormon thing, except without bicycles and white uh, button downs. <laughs> he's going to take a couple of years and and uh, spread the gospel, devote himself to that for for a couple of oh. years. Um, and, uh, yeah, so this year it looks like we're, uh, planning a trip to go to India, possibly Honduras, possibly Japan. We're looking for some contacts in Japan and don't have any right now, but we have had uh, a donor step up who's had a heart to send us there and we're like, all right, we'll go. So, uh, you know, we've got a all expense paid trip to Japan to spread the gospel if we can, find some contacts so if anybody knows of a church or some believers over there who can put us in touch with some believers that want to get equipped to walk in the fullness of Jesus we know it's a very difficult different culture and we we know how to work with different cultures because the kingdom of God man there's things that it it affirms and it brings the best out of every culture it's like salt, you know, it brings the best out of every food, you know, and uh, there's some things that, you know, that it'll, uh, that it'll correct, but it's, uh, it's fun and a challenge, and I'm looking forward to another great year. Well, if I find that uh, contact in Japan, you got to fund me, too, so I can go with you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, I was playing. We'll definitely look into that for you. I got some friends, so uh, I got a question. I got a question for you. There's a lady who um, contacted me. Her husband is has been suffering. He's in the hospice or hospital right now. They wanted to put him on hospice, but they can't because they said that his organs are shutting down. Can we call her right now together Absolutely. and blast her over the phone? Okay, I'm gonna uh, take a, mo a break here. This is what we do on the show. If we get somebody that needs some prayer, we just take a break yeah. and do it real quick. Um, I'm gonna call her and then I'm gonna connect you on throughway, and okay. um, and then um, uh, I'll let you handle the electronics and uh, and then when we get connected, you know, we'll do whatever. Okay, great. Um, while you're doing that, one of the things that I've really enjoyed about uh, about discovering the kingdom of God is realizing that it's not limited by time or by space, um, and that you can we really can take advantage of the technology that we have. It doesn't have to be a big inconvenience to our lives. <laughs>
Yeah, it's great, man. We've, we've done like a lot of Skype meetings and stuff. I mean, we had so many results. Hey, is this Miss Linda? Yeah. Hey, this is Brother Zoe up in Columbia. Okay. And I, I got Brother Andy on the line with us. What I'm going to do is I'm going to call him and connect him by three-way, okay? Okay. Hold on one second. Hey, Zoe, as you call me, should I mute my uh, computer microphone? Uh, so we can get a bunch of feedback. I don't Sorry. know that you need to do that. Hello? Hello? Hey, are, are you there? Are you? Okay, great. Miss Linda, this is Andy. Andy, Miss Linda? Hi, Linda. Hey, Andy, how are you? I'm doing well. It's nice to meet you. Zoe was uh, sharing with me that your your husband is suffering right now. Yes, he is. What is it that uh, that he's being afflicted with? Um, he created um, that to the liver. Okay. 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 Are you with him? Yes, I'm standing in the front of the bed. Okay. Would it be possible for you to um, to put your hands on him? And I'm just going to agree with uh, with God for your husband's healing. Jesus said that believe believers will lay hands on the sick and they'll recover. And I'm assuming that you are a believer in Jesus. That's how Snow knows you. Yes. And and I'll. Uh, uh, just agree with you because Jesus said we're two or three are gathered and agree on it. It will be done for them. So I just want to pray for you. I've seen, I've seen Jesus heal people of cancer. Uh, cancer is not too strong for him. Uh, and he loves you and he loves your husband. He wants your husband to be healed. That's why he went to the whipping post. By his stripes, we can be healed. So if you don't mind, just put your hands on him, and I'm gonna I'm gonna pray and just just declare over that cancer if that's okay. And Joe, you can agree with me too. You want me to sit you on speaker? That'd be fine. That'd be great. What's your husband's name? I am. I missed that. Sam. Sam. Okay. Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, we thank you that you are present right now with Sam. Jesus, you are Lord, that you are King, and that you have won the victory over cancer. In Jesus' name, right now, you spirit of cancer, you listen to me. I come to you in the name of Jesus and by the power of his blood, and I command you, go from him. You lose him and enter him no more. Right now, I cut you off by the power of his stripes. In Jesus' name. Every cancer cell and every cancer tumor, you cut out of his body. You come out in Jesus' name. I release the fire of God right now to flow through him. In Jesus' name, be healed. Be healed. Be completely healed and whole. Pancreas, be restored. Liver, be restored. Every organ right now, I set you free from this cancer. In Jesus' name. Be healed and whole from head to toe. It will be this way and no other. Sam is forgiven of all of his sins and healed of all of his diseases. This is our covenant with our God. In Jesus' name, we declare it. And we enforce it. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. We just bless you, God. We thank you so much. For your grace, thank you for your mercy, thank you for your power. God, you are awesome. You are God above all things, and there ain't no God but you. Hallelujah. And everything bows down to the name of Jesus. So we thank you, God, for the bowing devils. Hallelujah. We're just giving thanks to God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Amen. Jesus, for Amen. the healing in his body. We bless you, God. You are awesome, magnificent. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Bless you, God, Amen. that he is healed. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you Lord. Amen. For the work you did at the whipping post, your perfect work it is Amen. finished in his body. In the name of Jesus, thank you, God. Amen. Amen. Hi. Hey, Sister Linda. Hey, can you hear me? 
Yes, I can hear you now. Okay, praise God. I was uh, just thanking God, and I had you on mute there. But we were okay. thanking God for that healing in the name of Jesus. So just kind of join me right now. We're just going to thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. Thank you for the fullness of the healing. Thank you, God, for doing what it is that you do best. Hallelujah. And that is miraculous works, God. You created everything through the word, and you have sent your word, and you've healed Sammy in the name of Jesus. You Amen. sent the word wrapped in flesh back 2,000 years ago to die to be beat at the whipping post and you sent us today with the word to send that word again and destroy every work of the devil in the name of Jesus, enforcing what Jesus has already done. So we just thank you, God. We Amen. thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. S thank Sister Linda, just say thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. All right, God. I'll give you a little I'll call a little later, okay, and check on you guys. Okay. okay. All right. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye. Praise God. Technology is a is a wonderful thing. Praise God. Bless the Lord. Uh, thank you for taking the moment out to to do that. Um, you know, we prayed. I blasted him yesterday, and he got um better he recovered a little bit he was doing okay all night and then this morning and then up to noon today and then things went rocky again and, and uh, so she was really concerned yeah sometimes the challenge in the hospital is that you you're always faced with another doctor coming in doing another test speaking more negative stuff and um uh, you know uh it, those spirits can just hang around there sometimes and uh, wait for you to come back into agreement with them, even though they've been vacated from the premises. You know, they they uh, they hang around waiting to see if you're going to open the door back up. Uh, we need to get, you know, that's part of helping people. They need to get filled with the kingdom. That way that they're filled in the inside. They're not, a, 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 I came, I don't know when I started using this, all my missionary travels, you know, uh, an empty water bottle is very easy to crush. But when the water bottle's filled with the lid on, <laughs> you can you can put the same amount of pressure, but you can't, you know, you might make some inroads, but as soon as you get your hands off, boom, it just pops right back out to its normal shape. Glory to God. Hallelujah. <laughs> good, good. That's good. Oh, praise God. You know, I, I, I the Lord's been really, really putting on my heart uh, about, um, you know, persevering in the word and, and continuing continuing and continuing no matter what's coming at you you know it's difficult sometimes it feels like you now if you've ever been driving down the interstate you know and you got to get to your destination but it's you're behind like rigs and so you it slows you down and there's rocks being kicked up and they're dashing your vehicle and you're just like ah kind of makes you want to pull off and you know take a break or something because <laughs> you're dealing with these big things that seem to be slowing down your progress but mm -hmm. you still got to keep going you know kind of talk just a little bit about what you've been seeing out there i know that you you know you were you've been you've written several books yourself you know um and you've written one co-authored with a with a, a young lady that has getting a lot of results in, in one area of ministry kind of talk to us about some of what you've been seeing that helps people maintain um especially uh in the area of like you know birth defects and stuff like that I, you know because i know that Anya's healing miracle was incredible, and that didn't happen like you laid hands on him once, walked out of the room, and everything's good. You right. know, there was something more to it. So talk to us a little bit about that. Yeah, well, one of the ministries that I um, that I partner with and very proud to partner with is a ministry called Team Avalanche. It's a global ministry that is dedicated to ministering healing to children that are born afflicted with birth defects in the name and the power of Jesus. Um, Margaret uh, Soon is the leader of that ministry, and she and I met actually when she was living in South Carolina, um, probably that same mission trip, Zoe, where we first met. Um, so that was really a very fruitful ministry for the kingdom. That's one of the reasons I like to travel is because, you know, God's doing a lot of things, and sometimes, you know, there's some people that, uh, that, that God is calling out to do greater things, greater works than these. And, uh, you know, we need to partner and help one another. Um, and, but as we form those relationships, you know, it's kind of like David's mighty men, you know, <laughs> you, you might, you, it's, it's uh, you know, you, you meet in a cave, uh, but you got a work to do for the kingdom. 
Uh, yeah. And so we met, Margaret and I met in, in South Carolina. And by that time, she really already had the message and she was going after healing um, for her daughter who was born um, with a diagnosis uh, from, a, uh, from birth. And so Margaret uh, is just an extraordinary uh, woman of God, just filled with faith and zeal for the Lord. And she began to keep a blog um, out on the uh, website, uh, out on the internet, because she was really just dealing with the whole issue of everyone is teaching me, is, is lo looking at me like I'm crazy for some reason. But I know I'm not crazy. Um, you know, I know that what Jesus suffered at the whipping post applies for every disease and every affliction and all healing. And he heals all those who need healing. And my daughter needs healing. Um, and so there's there's nothing to uh, to lead me to exclude this. And so just because we haven't seen it happen necessarily uh, in our lifetime, you know, Margaret was one of those people that rose up because of what she saw in the Word of God and began to um, to share those uh, the results that she was seeing. Uh, and she was seeing dramatic uh, results in uh, in her in her daughter. Bone structures change, um, uh, uh, respiration change, uh, all kinds of symptoms that were related to her her diagnosis. Uh, were seeing dramatic improvement. She began to share the the this out on the internet because she felt like God had called her to do that because she. She knew she was not alone, that there were other um, prophets that had not bowed the knee to Baal, so to speak. Um, but uh, And so as she began to do this, people began contacting her, and they began uh, using Skype and computers to, um, to form teams. And, man, they are organized. They are intense. Um, they are... Um, and they, they go after it. They team up, and they support one another. Um, to see their children healed, um, and they're laser focused, and they're seeing results. Um, so my my role basically along with this is I've just come along for encouragement, for um, for support. Um, in a lot of ways, I, I think I receive as much encouragement as I give. Um, uh, so you know, it's been it's been something that's been on my heart. For uh, for a long time, um, I I really see this as a Goliath that has been taunting the armies of the living God that we've um, we've passed over. For some reason, even even those that in the church believe that God uh, heals today, when you start talking about two things, you you start seeing a lot of eyebrows raised, like somehow you're crazy. When you start talking about God healing birth defects, or when you start talking about raising the dead, either one of those two, it seems like people give you this kind of, are you crazy look? Um, because the truth is, until you understand, when you, in order to embrace God healing birth defect, you can't just believe in a hit and miss gospel or a hit and miss like, well, sometimes God might want to heal, but sometimes he, you know, you have to really have come into the revelation that Jesus shows us the fullness of who God is and what we, and he shows us the fullness, what a fully manifested son of God looks like and that we were created to walk in his footsteps, to be a son of God following after the son of God, that we've been brought into that same status, into that same authority, that we are co-heirs with him, that everything that he won is our inheritance. <laughs> and so we get to be uh, just like the rich kids, you know, that are, you know, growing up in, 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 you know, penthouses and mansions and all that kind of thing. We get born into what Jesus earned. <laughs> you know, when we get when we get born again, we get born into what Jesus earned. But there is a discipleship, a, stu uh, 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 a, a learning process that we have to go in in the house to learn how to manage and to lay hold of 
our inheritance in Christ. Um, and one of those things that the body of Christ has left on the table for a large part and is really starting to go after is healing birth defect, leaving nothing on the table of saying cerebral palsy, autism, Down syndrome, Asperger syndrome, whatever these syndromes are, uh, you know, that, that children are born with. Um, is going after those things because Jesus suffered in his body at the whipping post for their healing. And it doesn't, uh, it, it, just because they're born with a certain condition, and that's where the church goes all haywire, they think that just because someone is born with a certain condition, that that's the way God made them. Because we got our theology, you know, on a superficial level from Sunday school, and it's true, God made us. But we need to take a step back and do a little bit of thinking, do a little bit of, a uh, little bit digging a little bit deeper in the scriptures. Did Jesus leave past people over for healing because they were born with conditions if they were born lame did he say well that's the way God made you if they were born blind did he say I'm sorry I can't heal you that's the way God made you if they were born deaf did he say I'm sorry did he say hey when he walked into a village and say hey who needs healing oh. does it first said okay Everybody who was born with can step over to the left. That's the way God wants you. Or does it say that he healed all who had need of healing? Did it? And my Bible says that Jesus did the will of God, that he is the manifestation of who God is, of what it looks like when God's will is done on the earth as it is in heaven. And that's our inheritance. That's who we follow. We follow Jesus. We don't follow our experience. We don't follow the opinions of other people. Um, and so we need to realize that Jesus came to do away with things in the old creation and to bring in the new. And the old is gone. The new has come. And when he's made us born again, he's made us the agents of his kingdom. Yeah, yeah, that's it, man. I, you know, I want to um, play a quick video. Yeah, that's I can a, see. <laughs> yeah, I got a lot. I got it. I got it queued up here. It's of Anya's healing miracles. She had cerebral palsy. Tell us a little bit about Anya before I play it. Um, when we met Anya, um, she and her had been brought to a conference that I was in attendance along with Dave and Patty Loggy. Um, and she uh, was brought there specifically to receive ministry for healing. Uh, the way the conference was rolling out is that a, that a lot of the healing ministry was happening in between the spoken word. Um, and so we were asked, you know, they were needing to go home that evening, and no one had really ministered to Anya yet. And so we they invited us in, in the break to start ministering to her. Well, the break got over and they wanted to start the session and the session so you'll see that it first starts kind of we're in one room and then it looks like we got to the hotel lobby well that's the reason why we went out there because she had not yet manifested any healing um, but we knew that she was already healed by the stripes of Jesus and so it was amazing to begin to see her breakthrough um, and I've got an update after you see the video I've been in I've continued to stay in in close contact with the family. I wouldn't say close contact, but in contact with the family. Um, and uh, so I've got some updates on Anya as well. Praise God. Okay. Well, I'm going to, I'm going to pull that video up right now. Praise yeah. God. Here it is. This is the uh, Anya healing miracle um, and enjoy it. Hi, I'm Michael and, and we have our daughter Anya who had cerebral palsy and epilepsy and course of the week she started out walking on her toes and having to lean up against from Wisconsin Compassion, 
Hey guys, I think I had a technical error. I just want to back it up for the mother's testimony. Is that okay? <laughs> Jesus, for everything he's done for us. Her feet are even going back. Her feet were really wide before, and last night we noticed the bones are already starting to, to go back to narrow. And she walked back with the flat. Never done that before. Hey, Andy, about how long did it take you guys to get to this point in the in her development you know, when you were praying for her? Um, about 30 minutes. We, we were ministering to her for about 30 minutes before we saw any noticeable change at all. Um, we, would, we would minister to her, we would blast, and then we would have her stand up and then try to do something that she couldn't do. We'd have her walk on her own. And what she was doing uh, up to, to a certain point is she would, she would take a couple steps at the most and then she would just collapse in a heap. Um, and then there just came a point where uh, you, something shifted, and she—I think this is the place right here. She just she was able to move. You know, she she kept moving forward, and so we kept releasing life into her. Um, you know, uh, one of the, one, I'm not just hugging her. I'm, I'm I'm laying hands and declaring, and she you know seemed to form a special confidence with me and so the team began to recognize that I began to recognize that and so um, you know at we you know even though we were ministering as a team she uh, uh, you know we just were all there speaking life into her <laughs> and then then we began playing uh, red light green light because she had never had to develop any stopping muscles we honestly believe that her healing took place in an instant and now she's actually just developing muscles and coordination that she had <laughs> never had to develop um, before in her life. It's like a newborn baby. There, there's nothing wrong with them. They just have never had to walk before. So she, she had, she is now. She, she had been uh, able to take a couple of steps forward or to walk by holding hands and those kind of things. But now she's walking unassisted, and she had never had to learn how to stop before. So we started playing red light, green light, and. Um, and it was amazing. What was fun was uh, as we came towards the end of the evening and the parents were ready to go home, uh, Anya, you know, she's standing off by herself and she walks over to the, the uh, double doors, you know, and she trips the motion activated uh, sensor so that they open up. And she looks back over her shoulder at her parents and gets this big grin and says, waste it to the car, and she runs out into the parking lot. <laughs> and uh, she had never, you know, been able to do some of the stuff that kids could could do. Um, and, uh, you know, we kept asking her if she's getting tired, and and uh, she she said, nope, and I'd, I'd pray for her for a little bit, and she'd get this look on her face like, okay, come on, I'm ready to go again. <laughs> and uh, she got home that night. And uh, she went out in the backyard and played with her brother and sister for two hours. She had never been able to do that before. And she walked up the stairs by herself for the first time that night. Um, and since then, uh, since then, I have uh, continued to uh, keep in touch with her parents. Uh, I found out that that day was the last day that she had had uh, an epileptic seizure. She's not had seizures since then. Um, she uh, continued to gain strength and coordination. She walks very easily frontwards, backwards, sidewards. Uh, she, uh, her speech 
uh, is has is returned to to normal. Um, there's all kinds of things that they have mentioned, uh, but that was a huge turning point. I I don't know that they see her completely 100% symptom free, but everything is going the right direction, um, and has continued to uh, maintain and improve since then. And you know what we were seeing when we first saw Anya was a little girl that really had to be carried anywhere. She could take a couple, a, a step or two on her own, and then she would just collapse in a heap. And now she is full on, fully mobile and. Um, agile and <laughs> dangerous to the devil and one of the things that was very interesting is that her parents did uh, begin to have to train her in her identity because they did see that there were some inclinations towards regression but they recognized it as being more of an emotional thing that if if she began to act like she used to that she would get increased attention and she was starting to miss that attention um, mm -hmm. that she was getting before so even for her one of the things that was interesting is that they began they needed to begin to instill in her that her identity is not and listen to this and this is important her identity is not in her defects that's not what makes her special what makes her special is that she is made in the image of God and that Jesus paid an awesome price for her to have everything to bear that image and to have that and to know that and to experience that and so for her is to follow Christ and that and, and hit the price he paid that's what makes her special so that's one of the areas that that honestly we have to um, cross because it, the world system is set up against healing birth defects from the beginning because those are what are impossible to man and so if a if a parent asks for prayer for their child to to be healed of leukemia yeah uh, you know everybody thinks well that's a good thing but if you if if that same parent or if another parent comes up and says would you pray for my child to be healed, healed of down syndrome now the whole church begins to question what's wrong with the parent like the yeah. parent isn't accepting the child because they don't accept the defect as being something from God the truth is is that you and I were born sinners but being born a sinner didn't make us special <laughs> it, <laughs> it, 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 it's what gave God an opportunity to demonstrate his redeeming love and power towards us through his finished work at, uh, at of, of Calvary that's what makes us special and, but if we begin to identify ourselves as same as Christians, you know, if you you might be born again, but if you still identify yourself as a sinner, you're not going to live the, the life that Jesus wants you to. And yeah. it's the same way. If we start, if 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 we as believers won't be believing for them to be healed by because of what Jesus did, but instead embrace their defect as the basis of their identity you know we've we've you know you've got to make that distinction wait a second um, you know so what is what is it is there something that indicates well that you know the hardest thing is that it says that God knit us together in our mother's womb which is certainly true but Jesus that verse was in Jesus's Bible too wasn't it and so did Jesus say to the man who was born blind I'm sorry God knit you together in your mother's womb he doesn't want you to see he didn't say that there's things that happen when God knits us together in our mother's womb that means that he is intimately involved in informing us but there are other agents at work in us because we are born of Adam <laughs> and there are things that are oppressing Adam's race that he bowed the knee to Adam did that have no business in this creation and Jesus Christ came to destroy those works and to redeem us and to set us free. 
and I just praise God for for the move of His Spirit that's taking place right now through women like uh, through women and men like Margaret of like faith who are seeing it in the Word and they are going after it. They're not backing down. They're not slowing down. They're not they're not letting the mountains that they speak to answer back. <laughs> yeah. You know that's our problem. Oftentimes when we get in a protracted battle that requires perseverance, we'll speak to the mountain but then we start listening to it mm. and that mountain speaks back to us and mm. we and G and, and we start believing what our eyes see and what our ears hear and what hasn't changed and blah 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 mountains have been around a long time guys you know so when Jesus says you can speak to a mountain and it will move I mean that's the sort of faith that is being instilled into the body of Christ through these parents who are going after what Jesus has purchased for for their children and they are saying Jesus is Lord over every power over every principality and I don't care how long that mountain has been there if it's ne if it's always been there for every generation that's ever been it does not matter this must bow to the name of Jesus and God has given my words that authority he's bound himself to my words and if I will speak according to his word let his word abide in me so that what comes out of me is what he has said mm -hmm. then God has bound himself to those words and his power is being released and those children are being healed and that we're seeing it um, one of the things that's really cool is that there have been cases uh, in, and is it okay if I point out the book? Um, yeah, go for it. You're free. Um, <laughs> yeah, no. um, the thing that I like about the book, it's called um, God Heals Birth Defects, First Fruits, um, and it's co-authored. Um, Margaret and her team contributed over half of this book and that's the neat thing about it most over half of this book half of this book is like biblical foundations and practical questions that are addressed by myself and Margaret the other half are just straight out testimonies of parents who are bearing witness of what they have seen God do both in them in their family and uh, and in their children through uh, through the process of discovering the good news that Jesus has paid in advance for our healing and for our forgiveness of sins um, and so uh, that's one of the things that that I see uh, in them is that they are going after um, on the basis of what they see in the word and they're not letting circumstances back them down um, the other thing that I see with them is that they are coming together um, and encouraging and supporting one another. You know, the word talks about, you know, hey, uh, you need to uh, encourage one another day after day as long as it's called today so that you wouldn't be hardened by sin's deceitfulness. You know, uh, evil is uh, one of the remedies for, for overcoming evil and one of the opportunities that we have to continue to persevere in the body of Christ is the body of Christ. We need one another, and they are teaming up, and, and I'm so proud of them. I, I get encouraged just by seeing them do this. They have um, uh, several times a week. They have healing rooms. They have meetings that they encourage one another. Um, it is a really, I mean, it's on Skype, so they don't see each other face to face a lot, but man, it's one of the, the, the most aggressive manifestations of the church that I have seen in my life. It's beautiful. Yeah. Glorious. You know, um, what you said about continuing to persevere no matter what, like, and abiding in his word and abiding in him. Like I, 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 I've heard the Lord say abiding in me is just continuing to do what I would do, continuing to do my mission. You know, continuing to stay on the mission and abiding in his word means that you don't try to do what he would do apart from what his word is saying mm -hmm. and showing us, you know, because a lot of people say Jesus just told me to do X, Y and Z, but it's not necessarily yeah. something we do. <laughs> so yeah. that we measure it by his word, you know, and yeah. then it says, you ask whatever you will and you shall have it, you know, but it gives the father glory. Yeah. <laughs> My father's glorified when our prayers are answered. I want, I want to show you guys something real quick because what I want to do is I want to um the Lord showed me this earlier and I, I want to share it with you. It's about persevering, okay? And, and everything that um 
that Andy has been talking about is in the vein of continuing to go no matter what you see based on what the word says. So I'm just going to real quickly show you something that's really neat, okay? It's about Abraham and Sarah. Okay, first of all, in, in Romans chapter 4, I'm going to pull up the uh, little Bible thing here. Romans chapter 4, it says, um, this is about the promise of God, okay? So it's, it's here, it says Romans chapter 4, uh, verse number 16. It's a faith that it might be by grace. So faith enables grace to flow so that the promise might be sure to all the seed. That's to all of us. Not to only that which is of the law, but to that which is of the faith of Abraham, who is the father of us, of us all. As it is written, I've made you a father of many nations. Uh, before him who believed, God, who quickens the dead and calls those things which be not as though they were. Okay, so if you're, if you're, com if you're commanding things to be healed and thanking God for your healing, even though you're not necessarily seeing it, you're doing what God would do. <laughs> because you believe his word. When you speak the word, it's done. What Jesus Christ has already done for us has guaranteed our healing is already completed. So we're calling those things that, that are not as if they are because they are, not because they're not. When God says something is, it is, whether we see it or not. And so it says he hoped against hope, who against hope believed in hope. So he had one hope, which was his body was as good as dead, right? That's the next, that's the next passage. His body was as good as dead. That's the world's hope. The world's hope is you got cerebral palsy, Down syndrome, trisomy 21. You got X, Y, and Z. You know, that's the world's hope, and there's nothing you can do about it. That's even the church's hope. And uh, to a large degree, the church's hope is that, well, this is what you have. You just got to deal with it and trust God because he made you that way. And that's the kind of trust in God that God loves when you just bear up underneath that thing and die. Um, but it says, not weak in faith. He didn't consider his own body <laughs> dead when he was about 100 years old nor the deadness of Sarah's womb. So both of their bodies were incapable of producing what God said, right? As the world's hope was concerned. But it says this, he staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God. Now that doesn't mean Abraham was running around with his sleeves rolled up like super faith man, you know, like I'm the man of faith. I believe what God says and I'm walking in power. He didn't do that every moment, okay? He had moments of shakiness where he thought he might die, and so he lied, or he had his wife lie, and she was taken into Pharaoh's bedchamber, you know? He had a moment where he listened to his wife, and they had an, a, an Ishmael. I'm not saying that so we have excuses. What I'm saying is that there is a revelation here that I want to show you that helps us to understand how we deal with controversy in faith, in our mind, okay? I'm going to go to the Greek on that very passage there. He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God. In Romans chapter 4, Verse number 20, um, in the Greek, this is how it reads. It says, into yet the promise of the God. Okay, into the promise of God. Not was doubted to the unbelief. Now, I want to explain what that's saying. He did not doubt and then go into unbelief. It, it, okay, Jesus said, you'll have whatever you, whatever you ask for if you don't doubt, right? Well, what happened with Abraham was that his doubt did not lead him to unbelief. When, he, when in his mind there were things going on that were contrary, it didn't lead him to say, no, God can't do it. Okay, it said, the next thing it says, he was invigorated. He allowed those controversies and challenges to invigorate him into faith by giving glory to God. Amen? So what Abraham did was he began to praise God and give glory to God for what God had done for him because God said it. And so instead of like having those thoughts that came in and caused him to go into unbelief, those thoughts came in and he said, glory to God, hallelujah, you're going to give me what it is that you said you're going to give me. What you have done for me is mine. Nothing's going to take it from me. Glory to God who is able to do all things according to his word, according to his power. He gave glory to God so that he will be strengthened in faith rather than wavering and staggering into unbelief. Through the same kind of experiences we have in our head. You know, we got to take those thoughts captive. Praise God. Just because the thought comes in your mind doesn't mean it was from you, number one. Number two, doesn't mean you need to let it stay there. <laughs> Amen. That's what we deal with, you know. The other part that I want to show you is it's in Hebrews 11. And I'm going to go there now because um, I, I didn't have it keyed up. But Hebrews 11, uh, verse 11. This is really cool, too, guys. This is how Sarah is, is, is brought into this whole mix. Abraham and Sarah are a picture of of Jesus and the church. 
Okay, Abraham and Sarah are a picture of Jesus and the church. Abraham being Jesus, okay, who believes God, goes forth, even at the rock, he's there, you know, sweating, sweat that's so thick, it's like drops of, great drops of blood coming down, you know, needing strength to go in to do what God has said he's going to go do, you know. He's, he's having a, a struggle. It's not, uh, not my will, but yours be done, Lord, because I don't really want to go through this, <laughs> you know, but he is holding on. And he's going forward anyway. Praise God. So his faithfulness provides the way. Jesus's faithfulness provides the way. But this is what it says in Hebrews 11, 11. Through faith, also Sarah herself received strength to conceive seed. And was delivered of a child. She was able to have a child when she was past age. She was able to have a child when she was past age because she judged him faithful who had promised. So the promise of God that was given to Abraham also required Sarah's faith in order to come to pass. Sarah also had to believe in this God who was faithful, but Abraham's faith happened first. Just like for us, Jesus has made the way for everyone. Anyone who will believe is able to partake of what his faithfulness has provided for every single one of us. Praise God. So just like Sarah, we have to get past the same obstacles and believe that God is faithful and his word is and his word is faithful. His word. And if you've seen Jesus, you've seen the father. That's what Jesus said. Right. If you've seen me, you've seen the father, Jesus said. So Jesus is the incarnate word of God. Amen. If you see God's promise concerning anything, you've seen the Father. That is his desire. That is his will for all of us. Praise God. His desire for us is represented in what Jesus did and what Jesus said, what God has promised through the word of God. So if we believe the word, we're going to have what it says because it's the Father speaking to us. It's not just Jesus doing it and the Father's got a different idea. <laughs> it's not Jesus said that, but you know the Father may have a different plan. What Jesus did is exactly what the Father wants us to have. Praise God and wants us to do. Bless the Lord. Amen. And I want to pass it back to you, brother. <laughs> Praise God. Amen. Man, that's beautiful. That's exactly right. You know, one of the things that's interesting in that is that um, Abraham not only had to believe for Sarah's womb to uh, receive life so that she could bear a child, he had to believe something about God. He had to believe something about himself. God changed Abraham's identity and it changed Abraham's name. He had to walk around saying, uh, yeah, I'm father of many nations. Oh, yeah, where's your children? They're coming. <laughs> you know, uh, he had to do that. You know, and so sometimes we need to just be doggedly determined that we say about ourselves what God says about us because we can't. Uh, because if we deny what God says about us, we're also denying him, his faithfulness. God's final word about healing, about everything, is Jesus. Mm -hmm. That's his final word. He's not making new stuff up. That was yeah. his word once for all spoken, settled in the heavens and displayed on the earth. Jesus Boy. is the word made flesh, and we can take it to the bank. And we've got to take it to the bank. Um, one of the things that's encouraging is when you see the word having its effect, but what comes first, the, the, res, the fruit or the believing? The mm -hmm. believing has to precede it. And so that's where the body of Christ really needs to rise up. We're so excited because we're seeing uh, children uh, already that um, go from uh, one, one, one lady had a child that uh, I think she was in Canada. Uh, don't quote me on that one. But uh, their school staff basically had a meeting and said, you know, unless you can get your child on some medication, uh, they're not even going to be able to stay in the special needs program. We, we're not equipped to give her that much attention. Well, guess what? That was right about the time that they discovered this message, and they began to declare over their daughter healing and, and teaching. Her daughter was old enough. They began to teach the daughter how to speak about herself, and, and, and guess what? They, she is now moved into normal classes. <laughs> and, they said, 
the transformation has been amazing. What, what medication did you get her on? And they said, we didn't ever put her on any medication. We began to, uh, we discovered that Jesus heals today, and we discovered not only that he does, but how he does it. And they began ministering that. What's been exciting for me is I go up every now and again, I'll go back to Amazon for some reason, and I'm seeing the reviews that people are, are writing about this book. And I'm seeing already evidence of people saying, at first I was skeptical, then we read it and, and checked it out biblically, it was all biblical. Then we started doing it, our children aren't having seizures anymore, their symptoms are leaving, you know. And these are people we've never even met. And I've told Margaret and I've told her team, you are going to have people that you've never met that come up to you and they give you a huge hug with tears and that they, they, they show you their children that are perfectly normal, and then they launch into a testimony to share with you the difference that your stand of faith has made for me to be able to find, to lay hold of what Jesus has for me in the kingdom. You know, it's bigger, and, and so we've got parents, honestly, it's a daily fight. You wake up in the morning, you know, Abraham wakes up in the morning, and, and you know, and, and Sarah, you know, she's still in pregnant, you know, and this is year after year after year. But you know what? You just keep giving glory to God. You keep saying God is faithful. He's yeah. not changed. Uh, you know, I don't understand the delay. You know, that's one of the hardest things. It just begins to kind of wear you down uh, in your mind. I don't understand the delay. So it's not about not having your own understanding. It's about not leaning on it. It's not about not having any doubts. It's about not giving any place to it or giving any authority to those doubts. You act and give authority and give place to the Word of God. You acknowledge Jesus as King in all of your ways, and He makes your path straight. Uh, yeah. So that's what we're seeing. We're seeing people partnering together. They're, they're getting rooted in the Word, and they're choosing to believe what they see in the Word and see in Jesus, and they're going after it. They're, they're, they're cutting ties with what if it doesn't happen, and what about this, and they're not trying to protect themselves somehow. Um, and the way to get there, and this is the hard thing, is that I think a lot of what pushes people, holds people back, is that in their root, in the heart of hearts, they're afraid to fully entrust themselves to God, yeah. for a because there's still um, a part of them that feels like if it doesn't come to pass, that they're going to get so hurt that they're going to take their ball and go home. They're going to yeah. say, well, forget this. And, you know, if that's where people are, there's some mind renewal that really needs to take place um, that can only take place as they begin to, 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 to build a foundation that's firm enough. These parents are not going after this because, God, you have to do this or I'm just throwing in the towel. Uh, you know, I, I'm giving up on you because the only reason I really love you is, is the benefits of the blessings of the healings we can get out of you. That's not that if that's and they may start there. <laughs> they would never say it that bluntly. Um, but to be honest with you, they don't get very far that way. Um, yeah. Eventually, they really those layers of 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 selfishness. They come to the surface and they get called off, and then the fire keeps burning. And those layers of fear and selfishness they come to the surface, and you know, after a while, you're just putting off more and more of that old man. You're realizing, you know what? The new has come, the old is gone. I'm not even worried about the old staying; it's already gone. And you're 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 ministering everything from the standpoint of we've already got this, so. Whether it be, and, and believe me, we're not leaving anything on the table. We're going for 100% of everything that Jesus purchased for, for every child. Amen. Um, but our faith isn't based on the results of whether they get healed or not in our lifetime. Uh, our faith is rooted. We're going after this because we've already seen it as a finished work in Jesus Christ. Yeah. We're not going after it so that we can prove something to ourselves, so that we can get a better way of life. Uh, you know, I mean, we believe that, that Jesus has purchased 
for us freedom from this oppression called sickness, disease, and sin. It's evil. And we, we get to pray, deliver us from evil. Which kind? All of it. We don't All have to choose. Amen. Uh, and so... Go on. Amen. Yeah, I mean, God isn't giving devil any place. And so when we realize Jesus has all authority, that he has all victory and all power, he lives in us, and he's wanting us to renew ourselves so that he can fully manifest the fullness of his victory, then we get to go after setting captives free. And that applies to children, no matter what they were born with. We can't exclude them. We can't leave the, the, the least of these. And what you do to the least of these, that, that means everything. And so that's part of why this is so important for the body of Christ. And I just encourage anybody who's dealing with a birth defect or a long-term illness, and they've been standing and standing, don't be alone. Find other people who will stand with you. Uh, get yourself renewed in the Word. You know, Don't let your bodies or your children's bodies or conditions, your spouse's bodies or conditions speak to you. You need to have the Word flowing into you at a greater degree than the pressure you know, of, of what you're going into. So if, what's your, if your intake isn't meeting that demand, then you need to increase your intake. You need to increase your fellowship. You need to increase your aggression. Stop holding back and let everything else go because uh, the kingdom of heaven is taken by violent force. <laughs> and you've got to go after this. It's yours. But you, it, devil's not just giving up ground and saying, well, I guess you have the legal right to defeat me now. You know, he, he's roaming about like a roaring lion seeking who he can devour. And if you're not willing to face lions, then you're just going to be a victim uh, or, or not certainly not going to set people free. You know, I want to share something real quick, too, because I have I have been Sarah. You know, you look at Abraham and Sarah and you see two different kind of characters. You know, see, you see Sarah laughing. You basically see her not really believing, but kind of going along with it or whatever. I have been Sarah, you know, um, for quite some time. I put God on trial even. Um, I, I, I wasn't out sowing the devil like Andy just was talking about, you know, because the devil's sowing seeds of unbelief and doubt and and whatever, you know, in your mind, in your eyes, through your friends and family. And I wasn't out sowing the devil in my life. And um, I, one day I drove past the gym and I saw people in there exercising and the thought flashed before me, like, just because you can't lift 100 pounds right now doesn't mean you won't lift 100 pounds in a week. That's you right. just need to keep lifting the weights. You just keep going. <laughs> you don't need to stop. You need to keep going. You don't stop lifting weights because you can't lift them. That's you right. <laughs> and the way you're going to be able to lift them is not that God somehow miraculously gives you muscles that you weren't born with. It's that you use um, with discipline, with determination, with perseverance, the muscles that you were born with. Well, we were born again with everything that's in Christ. And as we continue to, in a disciplined, determined, focused way, put demand on those muscles of, of the Spirit, so to speak, over and over, and uh, releasing and using that power, um, that, that everything that, that is capable of, uh, by the power of Jesus begins to emerge. Be, we, we begin to, uh, to see things that we couldn't do um, a few months ago. Now we can do. Why? It's because you've been using what you've got. Yeah. You know, and, and, and the, the benefit of being in fellowship, like Andy was saying, is that like it was the time I put, got on trial the most is the testimony. I mean, our time is pretty much up, but I just want to finish this and, and we'll pray for everybody and then and call it tonight, but just hang with us a few more minutes. But, um, but the Bible says that God changed Sarai's name to Sarah and Sarah means, um, I will bless her and she shall become nations. So we got the father of many nations and she shall become nations. Right? So they both had to, believe in a new identity amen and that he was faithful who had given them a new identity amen and that that identity was going to come to pass so we have a new identity but i was i had we were walking in power we were going and praying for people we prayed for a little girl with cerebral palsy her fingers were going the wrong way they went backwards you know like imagine her hand was i can't even do it i can't even show you what it looks like but we prayed for her i closed her hand while we were praying you know and i, and I was just blasting her commanding her body to line up and i was like do you feel anything different going on in your body and before I did that, I had showed her the Anya video, right? So she was getting kind of excited. And then um, she was like, well, I can do this. And she, her nurse flipped out, started screaming. <laughs> David already prayed for her nurse. She had like a keloid and, and the pain went away. But now she sees her, 
her uh, client <laughs> opening and closing her hand. She starts weeping. They both give the lives of the Lord, take off in tongues. And my son's there. Okay. So what happens to me is I'm on the basketball court and I snap my Achilles tendon <laughs> and um, I blast it because I don't want to limp. You know, I blast with everything I got. I, I confess every promise to Claire as loud as I can, as hard as I can. And my pain goes away, but it didn't come back together. So anyway, I walked up the steps, got in the car. I'm on the way home. No pain. You know, and my son, and my son's in the back seat. My wife's next to me. And I'm like, what am I going to do? My wife's like, I don't know. What are you going to do? I'm like, maybe I'll just have him go put it back together. You know, go to the doctor. My son's like, Dad, what are you talking about? God's your healer, right? He's going to heal you, right? I'm like, well, you know, yeah, you're right, son. But in my heart, I put God on trial. In my heart, I was thinking, well, the Lord's got a few days because I need a miracle here. I don't need rhetoric. I don't need hopium. <laughs> I wait like 200 <laughs> I weigh 200 pounds. It's going to have to carry me for the rest of my life. You know, I can't heal wrong. And so I, I go home and I lay down in the bed. I wake up and I go to use the bathroom and I step down and the pain is so severe. It's like somebody stabbing me on both sides of my ankles. I'm like, ah, in the name of Jesus, power of the Holy Spirit, pain, you go. And the pain wouldn't budge. Nothing, nada. I received nothing from the Lord because I had put the Lord on trial. Right. So here I am now. I can't get anything for myself because <laughs> I have done exactly what Dave, what, uh, what Andy was just saying is I was, I put God on trial and I was not just, I was like, if you don't do it in a certain amount of time, then I'm bagging up my, my balls and I'm going home, you know? <laughs> so my son comes in and he says, dad, I'm going to pray for you. You're going to run. You're going to walk. I'm like, okay, son, let's just see if you can't get the pain off of me. That'll be great. <laughs> so I lay down and he prays and I black out on the bed and I open my eyes. I'm like, oh my gosh. I just got slain in the spirit by my son. And my pain was completely gone. My, my son was like, Dad, run, walk. I'm like, I can't run yet, but I, I don't have any pain. And I'm all excited, you know, and it's not back together yet. But the next morning, the same thing happens. I wake up, pain so severe, blast nothing. Because I'm still not there yet. I'm, I'm, I'm in my head debating. I'm, I'm going down. Instead of increasing in faith and giving glory to God, I'm letting it get me into unbelief in my head, you know. My son gets up and he's like, he, I mean, he's fully in belief because he saw the little girl with cerebral palsy, whose fingers he's seen us pray for people all over the place, get healed. So, and he's not going through it. So he lays hands on me that morning. All my pain goes away. <laughs> Every day for two weeks, my son would pray for me in the morning. My pain would go completely away, and my Achilles tendon stopped hurting after two weeks. Within four weeks, I was still walking on it tenderly because I was concerned. I was getting all kinds of grief from my son and my wife. She's like, "Why don't you just walk on it? It's healed." I was like, "I just don't want it to." <laughs> I was still walking like a cat. You know, on on some wet grass or something. But my uh, my wife threw the keys to me. I was on the front porch. I jumped up to catch them, and I realized that my Achilles tendon was completely healed. And it was four weeks later, and I'm out there like doing kung fu dancing with my kids in the yard. Like, oh yeah, it's healed. Praise God. Uh -huh. so, you know, <laughs> but the only reason I kept going was because I consider that he was faithful. You know, I judge that he's faithful, even though I didn't have the ability to get it for myself at that particular point. So I'm telling you, if you've been like Sarah and you have had these doubts come in and you've entertained them, you've even laughed at it and you laughed at God, or you just got so distraught you wanted to go make a Ishmael, you know, whatever the case may be, that as long as you are tied in with people who are walking in faith, like Abraham's, as long as you're tied in with people who are getting results and they're going after it with all their heart, who believe God's promise and are not backing down, they are not going to waver into unbelief, but they actually experience the trouble and they give glory to God. As long as you're with them, you're going to receive what God promised you. Praise yeah, God. Yeah. And then you're going to get into believing your identity just like Sarah. Amen. And you're going to become nation. You're going to be making disciples who do the same thing. Glory to God. Because that is your inheritance. That's our inheritance. Amen. Bless the Lord. Amen. Bless you the know, Lord. And, and that's a good thing. We need here's here's one thing. I'm just going to follow up with that because I do have people that contact me uh, and you know, and they contact me once. Mm. They, mm. You know, they still have got on trial. And so one of the things that happened with you is that you had somebody that you could go to that you went to consistently, persistently. When you couldn't persist, your only persistence was, let me call my son back in here. And so you, if you can't get a hold of it all by yourself, you need to realize you are in the body of Christ. And we need to be that for one another, but we need to, you know, even when we're hurting, you know, just pick up the phone again. 
right? And don't <laughs> don't let the enemy tell you, oh, you know, you're just bothering them. And well, if 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 God was going to heal you, you'd be healed by now. He already healed you two thousand years ago, and you need to have somebody that has that mindset that it's already there. It's a matter of whether we by faith are able to persist and lay hold of this thing and why does it take why does it take two weeks or four weeks you know what uh, those kind of questions can slow us down it's because you know uh, maybe here's you know when it, it's a matter of us um, you know if you've ever um, had a uh, one of those spice things or a pepper shaker you know it's got that big hole that's about half of it underneath then on the top it's got that little section it's got all the little holes and then it's got that other section like you know you you make the mistake of pour that out man now you got to throw away your your macaroni and cheese or whatever you know it's just like dumped out um and it was now here's the deal in christ god has opened up all that heaven has the hole underneath has been opened by Jesus it's permanent it's fixed his 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 final word is yes for the kingdom he's poured it out now for us we align ourselves with him and so sometimes at first we're kind of poking holes you know we're getting some areas lined up and sometimes it's pouring out and in some instances you know now it's with me and now you know maybe for other people man I can just pour out the the whole thing you know and really mess up the devil's works uh, but for me I've you know I've got a few holes but you know I need somebody else who's going to join with me now whatever you've got don't worry about you it's about what's in you that's important and we need to get less of us get most get clutter out of our mind and out of our heart and out of our disobedience so that we align ourselves with the Lord you know Curry taught me that and I thought it's a perfect illustration Curry Blake uh, with JDLM. I love that guy. Um, and, you know, he's just helping a lot of people, and he's helped me a lot. And so it's kind of neat. You you take this, but you need to find people who 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 um, can persevere with you. And so even if you can't get it all yourself, link up with people that can – that because sometimes, honestly, it's easier for me to believe God for your healing than it is for mine, especially when I'm feeling the pain. <laughs> That is a trial. That is a challenge, man. But God is faithful. Praise God. I mean, He's done it for me multiple times. Amen. Multiple Praise times. I, I tore my abductor muscle. I was at the at the football field shooting, and and multiple times I'm blasting it. The pain will go down, but come back, go down, and come back. Come home, lay on the couch. I'm just in pain. My wife and my son lay hands on me. Every bit of my pain goes away. I have a bruise like this size on my thigh, and a bruise this size right next to my knee on the inside, and blood all down the bottom of my thigh. Right, but I have no pain. I was man. freezing. Because the blood was going down there to repair it, I'm, I'm in there freezing, right? And all yeah. of a sudden, I was like, I lay down in a hot tub of water. Ah. Yeah. <laughs> so we need each other, guys. We're yeah, a body. Uh, <laughs> I thought exercise was supposed to make you healthy. Sounds like it's tearing you up, man. <laughs> I started these eating donuts, you know, so I'm healthier <laughs> as a result. <laughs> oh, just good to fellowship with you, brother. You too, man. Why don't you blast everybody, man? Bless everybody. Praise God. Yeah, Father, in the name of Jesus, right now, I thank you for each one watching. And I just declare life and encouragement, strength and healing right now. I come against all sickness and disease, every deformity right now. In Jesus' name, I call you to account and I take authority over you. And I command you, go, you loose these people now. I release healing right now in life, right now. Bodies be healed. I speak, I speak wholeness right now. I command discouragement and depression and unbelief and every devil that's been seeking to destroy and to slow down the body of Christ. I break these chains in Jesus' name right now. Life and light. I command, I just release strength and encouragement. The joy of the Lord is our strength in uh, Jesus' mighty name. Thank you. Yes, bless the Lord. Bless you. Everybody be blessed. Just be blessed in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Fire all over your households, all over your families, everything you have, all the things you own, your whole everything that, that, that Job had that you know got attacked by the enemy. Everything that Job had that got attacked by the enemy right now is being blessed in your life. Praise God. His house, his work, the works of his hands, his children. Everything in your life is now blessed as a result of us releasing the life of God into it. Praise God. So just believe it, receive it, don't stagger. Praise God. Don't waver in unbelief. Receive it, and it is yours in the name of Jesus. Amen? 
Well, so if you guys got any comments, questions, concerns, you want to sling some poop at us, you know, just uh, throw it on that email address right there. See if I can point to it for you. Uh, God's Plain Truth TV at gmail.com right there. Praise God. Uh, when you sling that poop, make sure you hit the, your, your monitor with it, and, and I'm sure I'll get it. <laughs> That's the Lord. But God bless you guys. Praise God. This is God's Plain Truth TV. Andy Hainer, you want to say bye to everybody? Yep. Bye, everybody. Praise God. Bless the Lord. God bless you, Andy. Thanks for joining us this week. Everybody, we'll see you next time, okay? Peace. Hey guys, real quick, I want to let you know too. I want you to go, if you can, go to Andy Hainer's website here. I'm going to pull it up on here. Okay, go to Andy Hainer's website or here's here's Amazon.com and pick up God Heals Birth Defects right here. God Heals Birth Defects. Okay, the Kindle price is $5.99. You can get it also in paperback uh, for $15.95, or you can get Kindle Unlimited. It'll be absolutely nothing. You know, it's it's an, a remarkable book. I share a lot of quotes from it from time to time on Facebook to encourage my friends and family that are working, that are um, walking in power. Praise God. You can also go to his website, too. I'm going to type it in here. It's fullspeedimpact.com. Fullspeedimpact.com. Like, boosh, full speed impact. You can check out uh, some of his videos. Here's a video with David Hogan, the Freedom Explosion Conference, five videos there. A uh, documentary, the, the Kenya documentary there. Uh, becoming a supernatural mom, Tina Hainer. See that? All these things, uh, go check them out. Praise God. There's Born to Heal with Andy Hainer right there in the name of Jesus. And also, when you get an opportunity, go check out Dave and Patty's brand new website. It's at www.hslm.us. Hslm.us. Praise God. Um, their new website looks really nice. It's really clean and beautiful. And it's coming up now. Praise God. They got a new logo. They, if you if you want to find out where they're going to be at, just take a look at this little running banner here, or um, go to their calendar, which is if you scroll down right here. Praise God. That way you can find out where they are, what they're doing, when they have events and stuff, and you can join. Praise God. And if you want to watch live, they have a video channel too. So when they do, I believe in miracles on Monday nights, um, they're, they're supposed they're supposed to be putting them in here. And here is the spiritual first responder training. If you need training right now to begin walking in miracles, especially if you've been running from conference to conference, reading book after book, trying to get results, go here to the HSLM site, US, go to the video channel, scroll down to Healing Seminars, and watch the Spiritual First Responder. I'm going to give you a little glimpse of it real quick. This is the Spiritual First Responder training, and it was done in Savannah, Georgia, in the beginning of December. Dave, come on up. Thank you, Lord God. We're honored to have Dave and Patty here. Thank you. Praise God. So take a time, take some time out and go and peruse these websites. These are, are the people that we work with. These are our five-fold ministers, praise God, that are making disciples that make disciples that make disciples. Amen. So bless you guys again. Praise God. This is God's Plan Truth TV. This is Zoe. You guys, God bless you, and we'll see you again next week.